ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Workman, and this is a quick screencast for you uh, so that you know the answers to this uh, group unit three review that we did today in class. Your exam will be tomorrow. Uh, your definition of an isotope, of course, is any two or more forms of a chemical element that have the same number of protons in the nucleus, which means the same atomic number, but they would have different numbers of neutrons. There's a couple of different examples here. Hydrogen has three known isotopes. Hydrogen 1, which has one proton only in its nucleus. Hydrogen 2, which has one proton and one neutron in its nucleus. And hydrogen 3, which has one proton and two neutrons in its nucleus. <coughs> carbon has three known isotopes, carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. Carbon-12 has six neutrons and six protons. Carbon-13 has six protons and seven neutrons. Carbon-14 has six protons and eight neutrons. So that's a couple different examples of some isotopes. Isotopes, of course, uh, vary in their relative abundance. A sodium, uh, what defines a sodium atom as a sodium? Well, it's the number of protons that it have, has. If it's got 11 protons, it's sodium. If it doesn't have 11 protons, it's some other element. Um, of course, sodium has 11 protons. Usually, sodium has 12 neutrons. Um, the most common abundant isotope would have 12 neutrons. Uh, uh, sodium atoms have 11 electrons if they're atoms, but if they turn into cations, they have 10 electrons. This right here, this bluish uh, diagram, is our Bohr model of a sodium atom. Over here on the lower right is a, an example of a sodium ion. Notice the last energy level and its one electron are gone over here on the right side. Of course, a positive ion is a cation. It has become a cation because it's lost, it, uh, it's lost this one valence electron that it had before when it was an atom. Now when it's a cation, it doesn't have that electron. Here are some definitions uh, and some examples, and uh, whether or not uh, these examples of mixtures are uh, homogeneous or heterogeneous, whether or not they have Tyndall effect, and how you separate these mixtures. You can pause the video and just read through these things. Of course, you know, the three main types of mixtures that I'm going to want you to know about are solutions, suspensions, and colloids. Uh, when we do ionic formula writing, of course, you know the proportion of the number of ions um, needs to be whatever situation that's required so that the total charge is added up to zero. A copper Roman numeral one sulfate, of course, means you have a copper one plus copper. Sulfate's a two minus ion, so you got to have two coppers for every one sulfate. Here's the formula that reflects that proportion. This is called magnesium hydroxide. This is magnesium, and the OH thing is a hydroxide. There are two hydroxides for every one magnesium. And um, I didn't draw the particle pictures here for you, but I would expect that you'd know how to do that. There would be two aluminum three plus charges, and there would be three groups of CO3 to make something called aluminum carbonate. We also, for this unit, need to be able to identify what uh, types of changes are physical changes or chemical changes, and here's a list of these um, particular circumstances where you might encounter some changes and you know if it's a chemical change that means there's a chemical reaction occurring um, if it's a change where there isn't a chemical reaction occurring that generally is referred to as a physical change you can read through this list and review it as you need to <clears throat> when we look at isotope notation or isotope symbols uh, I'm sorry I couldn't get these numbers lined up directly one over the other, so you need to try to envision that a little bit. Carbon-14 would have eight neutrons. Sulfur-34, uh, uh, this would be sulfur-34. Uh, sulfur, in this configuration, would have 18 neutrons. Chlorine has 17 protons. This number down here, of course, is the atomic number, which tells us the uh, number of protons. The number above tells us the total number of protons plus neutrons. Um, and so in this circumstance, 37 over 17 chlorine, that would be give us 20 neutrons in the nucleus of a chlorine. Um, compounds, of course, are when you get two or more types of elements bonded together. A molecule is when you have two or more atoms bonded together, but they are generally the same type. So oxygen is a molecule because you've got two oxygen atoms bonded together, but CO2, carbon dioxide, that's a compound molecule because we have two types of elements here that are bonded in this particular combination. Water is another example of a compound. Nitrogen, that's a diatomic molecule. It's not a compound. Uh, nitrogen molecules are just molecules. They're not compounds. And of course, C6H12O6, this is a, this is a sugar molecule. It is a compound because there's more than one type of element. All of these things could be, um, what, when we look at this list, um, are these elements or not? Water is not an element. Fire is not an element. Gold, actually, this should be a yes. Excuse me, let me fix that. Gold is an element. I don't know why I have that as a no. Going too quickly there. Oxygen is an element. Carbon is an element. 
N2 would be considered an element because there's only one symbol there, and FE, that's one symbol, a capital letter, then a lowercase letter, that's just one element symbol, so that's an element. When you're calculating weighted, atomic, weighted averages of atomic masses, what you need to know is the relative percent abundance, and here's we've got some relative percent abundance of these three different forms of this particular isotope known as workmanium, and if you're going to do the calculation, what you need to do is multiply the actual uh, molar mass of these isotopes by their percentages, and so that's what this math is down here. And when you do this, you do not divide by the number of types of isotopes. Notice this does not have over three. You're not dividing it by three. All you do is you multiply the molar mass by the percent. This 0.687, of course, corresponds with that percentage. This 226.98 corresponds with this particular molar mass of this particular fictitious isotope. And then these two sets of numbers and down here, of course, correspond with these numbers up here. If you do the math correctly, and if you've got your order of operations, oh, I have a sign issue there. Let me fix that. That plus, that plus should not have been there. Now it's correct. Sorry about that. Um, this is correct now. If you've got this um, order of operations correct, you should be coming up with this number for the weighted average atomic mass of this fictitious element named workmanium. The other thing that you're going to be doing um, tomorrow, of course, is going to be looking at some hypothetical lab, lab data from some people that separated a mixture. I hope you can calculate the mass percent composition of that mixture. That's it right now. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye.